All right. Let's see if everything's set up here. Yeah, nice. Looks all good from my perspective and from the Behance network. So let's get going. Um, so this is a new time for me. I've been streaming in the mornings all semester. And with the semester coming to a close next week, um, I thought I would prefer switching things up and doing things in the evening. And so here we are, in the evening hours. Or at least the late afternoon. Depends on where you're coming from, right? Maybe some of you, it's morning, who knows? Anyhow, um, anybody who is here, welcome. Thank you for joining um, this stream. So it's funny, I've been doing this for... About two years now for Adobe. They asked a number of us in education, Adobe education leaders, a um, small handful, if we would want to do some Behance live streaming uh, as featured educators back in 2020. Um, and I said, sure. So I'm still doing it. All right. So today, let's see. So my streams, if you haven't seen my streams before, they vary quite a bit. I do all sorts of different stuff because I use all sorts of different software um, when I create things. And I teach all sorts of different software. So, you know, everything from Photoshop to Animate to Substance 3D to non-Adobe products. Um, I'm all over the place. So yeah, today we're going to do some stuff in Photoshop. So good old Photoshop here. And Photoshop is actually the first Adobe app that I ever um, became acquainted with, actually, because I was doing uh, photography, black and white photography at the time. And... um. Let me copy this. 
address here. Copy link address. I'm going to share this with some of my other groups. It doesn't look like we have a lot of people on here. Maybe if I share this out a little bit. Then, uh, you know, maybe we'll get some some stuff going on. But if you are here, please do say hi in the chat and let me know what you're up to. It's always good to know what people are doing. All right. So I want to make kind of a banner. And what do I mean by banner? Um, what I basically mean is like if we go to something like this inside of Twitter, right? You've got a banner up here, but this is getting kind of old because this was released. It's my latest book released in January. It's getting kind of old and I want to refresh it. I want to have something else in its place. So I figured why not just kind of muck around in Photoshop on the live stream and just get some ideas going. So let's go ahead and create a new file in Photoshop. So I'm in Photoshop here, new file. Oh, there's my new document dialog on the other screen. That always happens. You've got a couple screens going on and yeah, it always pops up on the screen that you're not <laughs> sharing. Uh, Sertal, um, welcome. Thank you. I hope you're doing well this evening. Or at least this evening from where I am, right? So let's see here. And like I said, I've got a week and a half of classes left for this semester, so... Ready. <laughs> ready for the semester to be over. So my streams also tend to be a little chit chatty. Um, that's why I do like to have people comment in the comments area because it's fun to talk to people from all over. Um, even though I'm showing things, I'm talking. I definitely want to share things that you all are interested in as well. So yeah, what I'm looking at here, the thing, the trouble with banners, right? When you're talking about banners like that, is that they're very per platform, right? So if you look at the specifications for something like Photoshop, Photoshop, Facebook versus Twitter versus LinkedIn and, you know, all the rest, uh, you'll get a huge amount of variation in terms of what width and height and so forth that they all expect to have. And even then, it's not perfect, right? You get things like text being cut off, right? So, like if I bring up my Twitter again here, you can see I've tried to, you know, keep things to the side and everything, but it's it's not perfect. And if I went and went ahead and did like a, a mobile kind of view, let me see if that works on here. That's just responsive. Let's try like a iPhone SE. Woo! Yeah, that's not too bad. I was thinking that might be a little bit weird, but actually Twitter works pretty good. Some of the other uh, networks, they don't, they don't do it so nice. You know, they start cutting stuff off. Text starts getting obscured. So I think it's kind of better to um, have something a little more abstract without text and everything. And honestly, the best resolution I can think of is something that's 16 by 9, because then you can use it for all sorts of different things. You can use it for video production, um, whatever you need. You can use it for slides, right? So let's go ahead and create something for those purposes. Um, for the width, I'm going to go, let's see. The... Hmm. Actually, we could go to film and video. and. Yeah, 1920 by 1080 right here, right? We've got 1280 by 720. These are all 16 by 9. Let's just go 1080. 
and a resolution at 72. Let's pop that up to 300. Create. All right. So one of the nice things about, you know, when you create something like this inside here is you get um, these guides, which is kind of nice. But it doesn't help us that much there. It's really made for video. And actually, I'm kind of curious as to my... Um, something Photoshop used to do. Which, I don't see anything around pixel width and height here. Pixel ratios for the document. Um, but what Photoshop used to do is it used to actually, like, have pixel ratios explicitly for, um, what do you call it, <clears throat> for video, so like DV stuff. I don't think they do it anymore, but it's been a while since I actually used one of these. Let's actually create a different document, 1920 by 1080 is what we want for sure. So I'm going to do new file and just start it with print and just type it in, 1920, just in case they still do that weird stuff. 1080. And I don't want inches, it's crazy. Oh shit. Oh, we're not supposed to say that. Although it's later, so that's probably okay. Uh, what was it, 1280? Uh, 1280. No, 1080. Gosh, I can't remember now. 1920 by 1080. Or height. Perfect. Oh, here it is right here. Pixel aspect ratio. We've got square pixels. So this is what I'm talking about. You know, this DV NTSC stuff where it's a 0 0.91 ratio. Like, nobody really needs that anymore. It's weird to still have that. So let's go create. So now we are for sure. We've got something that's going to work. So what's good about this is that you're able to design your stuff and really no matter what you're doing it for, whether it's YouTube or uh, Facebook or whatever, it's actually going to be, you can crop it. You know, usually when you upload, it'll ask you to uh, specify a segment of the file that's going to work for you. But um, let's see. Um, the idea I had, so I'm in Colorado, and in Colorado, we still have a lot of bear trees right now. Um, so I went into Adobe Stock's free library, which you can get from here, free. And you can choose images, videos, 3D, all vectors, illustrations, whatever you might want. And then you can look stuff up. So I looked for bear tree. And this is the free bear tree stuff that I found, which is pretty good. I can grab this down, just license it. It's going to come down into my downloads folder, right? And I also have it set to save to something, a uh, Creative Cloud library called Stock Assets. So I keep all of my stock assets in there as well. But before we start pulling these in, I'm going to need to... Um, create sort of like a background, right? And, you know, for that, you could use all sorts of different stuff. I'm just going to use a gradient, I think. So if I go in here and I'm like, hey, we've got this gradient tool. All I got to do is click and drag and look what we got, right? Nice gradient straight off the bat. And we can create a new layer and pop a gradient in that. And then we can manipulate that layer aside from the other layer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, something that I was really interested in with Photoshop when, um, when I first got into it, when I was doing a lot of 35 millimeter black and white photography, um, I was doing stuff with trying to do like photo collage. So just like lots of like deep, thick compositions.
Um, I'm not going to do that today. But that's that's kind of where I started with Photoshop. So one thing that I really like about this new version of Photoshop, you can see right here, um, they've improved all of the default gradient swatches. So if you remember what they used to look like a year ago, um, they were pretty gross. And now they're not so gross anymore, right? Some pastels, grays, which is always nice. Let's go into the reds, see what we have here for red. Purples. Yeah, there's some nice rich purples in here. Oh, this one right here, purple 16. Let's use that. So I'm just going to click drag from top to bottom, and I am intentionally going over the edge here, right? Um, what I want to do is hold down the shift key. That's going to constrain my gradient tool so that it's a straight line at 45 and 90 degree angles. That'll be straight there, and boom. There I go. I've got that really nice. And you can see these gradients are pretty good, right? So I'm going to rename this layer Gradient. Boom. And I'm going to get rid of my background layer because nobody needs that trash hanging around. There we go. So yeah, I've got my little guy right here, this little gradient just hanging out. It's pretty good. Hey, Bobby. Welcome to the stream. Let me know what you're up to, everyone. Um, are you all coming here for Photoshop explicitly or something else? And I can see there are still about three other... Yes, three other live streams going on right now that are featured on Behance aside from this one. So, yeah, I was kind of hoping at this time again, a new time for me, that it would be a little less crowded. But um, it's not bad, right? So let's pull in some of these trees right here. Wow. There we go. There's some trees. So actually, I'm not going to pull them in there. Undo. Actually, let's cancel. That'll do it. Um, instead of dragging this JPEG right onto here, I'm going to drag it up top into our kind of tab area underneath the edit bar, that is going to open it up in a completely new window. And what's cool about that is that we'll be able to select these trees and then bring them in one at a time instead of having to deal with them when they're already inside of our composition, right? I'm going to use the lasso selection tool here to... And <laughs> I'm using a touchpad, so... Eek. There we go. So now I can move this tree around and I can move this tree onto another document. Boom. And from here, we can see it's really big. So I can do a command T. And just kind of take him down. Yeah, so one of the neat things, right? around having something a little more abstract. Stuff like this. All right. So right now, we've got our tree. And it's a JPEG. It's got a white background. Looks horrible, right? This is why we created blend modes. Woo! Color burn, linear burn, multiply. So many different options here for blend modes in order to kind of cinch this guy in, make him look like he belongs, right? Um, and there we go. So again, shout to everybody in the chat. It is growing a bit. Um, please do let me know how you're doing today and what you're working on and what you're what you're doing this lovely spring day. Um, again, the trees here don't really have a lot of leaves on them yet. Some of them are starting to bud. 
which is nice. And <laughs> yes, getting emails from students as I uh, as I go through this, which in the morning, I usually when I was streaming in the morning, I would usually turn turn my email off. But um, it's fine. No, not that one. This one. Lasso. And these don't have to be perfect, right? I could just grab the top of this tree because that's really all I want. Bring that over. Pop it in. And again, let's go ahead and uh, darken, multiply, color burn. All sorts of different things we could do, right? So now that I've got these guys here, they're looking pretty good. That's cool. I like that, actually. Um, that's looking pretty good. So I've got to figure out what I want to do to further integrate these. Because they're a bit... What would it be? They're a bit severe right now, right? So we could do a number of things here. We could blur them a little bit. We could give them a glow. Um, we could soften them. Let's go ahead and... I'm going to select both of these. Just shift click, both layer 1 and layer 2. Right click and convert to smart object. This is going to take both of those layers, <laughs> bundles them up into smart object. Of course, we're going to have to reapply our... Oh no. Ugh. That's not good. Let's undo that. Let's do them both as individual smart objects. Yeah, so what's happening there is because they're on their own, like a smart object is like a, um, it's almost like a little Photoshop document that's inside your Photoshop document. If you're coming from like After Effects, right? Um, you can think of it as nested comps. Uh, Premiere Pro, you get nested sequences in Animate you have uh, nested symbols, right? So there's always this idea of nesting content inside each other. So of course, blend modes work against a background. So if I've got no background, which I didn't in this case, um, obviously the blend mode's, not, blend mode's not going to work anymore. So that's what happened. Hello, Fahad. How are you? What am I doing with these tries? Um, I'm just messing around. Um, which is basically most of what I usually do on my streams. Uh, I just kind of play with stuff. So what I'm doing here, the intention is to create some sort of an abstract uh, banner that I could use in different places in place of what I have now, which is just a big stupid advertisement, which, you know, there's only so much you can do with that stuff. So, now that I've got these as smart objects, which you can tell by the little indicator right here, um, in the lower right corner of the thumbnail for each one, um, smart objects are able to have filters applied that can be uh, messed with afterwards. So, doing stuff in Photoshop, you know, one of the things that I usually teach is that you should always do things as non-destructively as possible so that you can always reverse or modify your decisions, right? So Photoshop has smart objects that help with this. Um, so if I go ahead and choose one of these and filter, let's go ahead and do a blur filter. And what kind of blur filter do I want? Again, this is part of the creative nature of this. Who's calling me? Why are you calling me? Don't you know I'm streaming right now? They'll leave a voicemail if they're important, right? So, I don't recognize the number. Let's see, Gaussian blur is probably the blur I go to the most. Let's pull that radius down, although that is pretty cool. Um, Something like that looks pretty good. So this is my Gaussian blur. 12 pixels. 
You can see I have smart filters because I'm using a smart object. Anything that we apply as a filter is automatically going to be added as a smart filter that we can then turn off and on at our leisure, right? Let's go ahead and do it again. Filter, Gaussian blur. And by the way, when you do that, right? So you can see I chose filter, Gaussian blur from right here. Um, once you apply a filter to something inside of Photoshop, the last filter that's been applied and those settings that you applied with that filter are actually going to show up at the very top of your filter menu. So it's very easy to go ahead and do another one. Oops, I don't really want to save that. So, yeah, it's still a bit severe, right? It's still very black uh, against that pastel color. So what do we do? One thing we could always do is just take down the opacity, right? Although that makes it look a bit gray, which I don't want. I actually wonder if adding another gradient layer would help us somewhat. Just something to darken it. So part of what I like doing inside of Photoshop is really stuff like this. Actually, what if we, ooh, that's kind of nice. That's really cool. Let's add another layer. So I've got it at the point, I think, where I like it. You know, I like the looks of it, um, even though it is a bit severe. Let's add some adjustment layers to this some sort of tweak the coloration and so forth. And how are we doing? Not bad, okay. Alright, adjustment layer, let's go. So adjustment layers are added down here. And you can do things like black and white, color balance, vibrance, hue saturation. I am going to do a hue saturation. And there's my guy right there, right? Hue saturation. He's a adjustment layer. And you can see the properties of him right here. So we've got preset default. Um, there's a bunch of presets here that you can use. If you want to make it all sepia, right? Which we don't. Uh, but if you wanted to, there you go. We've got strong saturation. We've got old style. Yeah, a sinotype, which is sometimes pretty cool. Um, but we're going to go ahead and tweak this to our own liking. And I actually want to colorize this. Um, that way we can place our own color on it. Notice that if I toggle colorize on, um, it automatically applies the color that's selected across the image. So I want to find something suitable.
All right. So at this point, you can see it almost looks like I don't know if any of you have ever had your your eye scanned, like the interior of your eye. Um, it looks kind of like this. <laughs> You've got the different veins, vessels. And they can use this to look for different diseases of the eye, right? So as mentioned, we can tweak this because it is a smart filter. We can double click on that Gaussian blur and tweak it however we want. Take the effect down, push it up, whatever it might be. <laughs> that doesn't work, does it? It's fun to play, though. Let's go ahead and do it to this one. Nope. Nope. Uh, what I had before is good. That's how we're going to do it. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's zoom in here to 100% and see what it looks like. At 100%. Yeah, so we've got some yeah, weirdness, right? we got these like blotchy things going on, which don't look that great. We could probably fix this instead of doing color burn to do something like multiply. Although even that, not really. Ugh. Let's go back out here. Screen. Exclusion is pretty cool, but I don't think it's going to really work for this sort of thing. So again, what is everybody working on this evening, this week, whatever? I hope you're doing good work. I hope I'm doing good work. Another thing we can do is always colorize these. If we double click, we get into layer styles. All right. From layer styles, we can choose all sorts of different things like color overlay. And of course, anything we choose here is going to interact with all of the other effects that we have going on. And uh, it's just going to do a color overlay over the whole thing. So that's going to be pretty crappy because we do have a lot of that white. You know, I I could have removed the white and I still could. So if I wanted to try to remove that white color, stop asking me to save. Here, let's go. Trees. Save. Boom. Yeah. So if I double click on a smart object, right? You can see we are now inside of the smart object and it behaves just like another Photoshop document, right? So inside of here, I've got my single layer and of course I can remove the background. So let's give that a shot. Uh, that's not the best. Select subject. Ooh, change to a mask? Yeah, I don't know. Let 
Let's see. Let's save it. Let's see what happens. We go back. Not a huge difference, is there? Let's give it a shot on this one. Remove background. That one actually worked a bit better. Make sure to save that. It's fine. Dump some paint on there. See what we can get. Oh, look at that. Ah. Hmm. You know, I'm so glad that uh, Photoshop now has this feature where you're able to hover over stuff inside of Photoshop and see the different blend modes before committing to them. And I should say Photoshop on Mac OS because the Windows version has had it for quite some time. But Mac OS just got this not too long ago. Which is kind of silly. I'm going to add some noise to this. So if you've never played with noise, noise is great. Noise allows you to do all sorts of different things. Um, one thing that noise allows you to do is it can help in um, blending things together. So let's go 25, 24, 25, okay. You win, fingers. You can see here the noise helps, right? And actually, now that we've got these trees isolated, we've removed that white background that the JPEG has in place. We should be able to actually go through and do some better layer color colorization and so forth. So, unfortunately, we don't get as good a preview inside of here than we do elsewhere, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I really need to update some things, you know? It's been a weird pandemic. I'll say that. Oops. Nothing like the last couple of pandemics. What do you all think about that? See, I can change this hue however I want. Maybe we should put a skull in there. Oh, like some weird bird. Hmm, 
Not that bird. I want a creepy bird. I like creepy things. Why would I want that bird? Yeah, I, so here. I mean, I've got the feeling that Adobe Stock is a little bit confused because that's not a bird right there, is it? That's not a bird right there. There's a lot of stuff in here that's not a bird. I guess because I put the word creepy in there. Bird. So yeah, we got 15,000 results for bird in the free Adobe Stock library, which is cool. Let's find one that might work. I want one that's a bit menacing looking. So a lot of these could be made to look that way if you use them in silhouette, right? Because anything in silhouette is going to be obscured. It's going to be... Um... more mysterious, more menacing. A hundred pages of these, huh? Well, let's just pick one off this page. I don't want these derpy looking birds. I want something that is a little bit something. Let's grab this guy here. I think one of these will work for a silhouette. Great. Thank you, Adobe Stock. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so sad. All right, so we're going to do the same kind of trick. We're going to bring it into the tab bar and not directly into our object. And let's make this not a background. Let's remove background. Hey, look at that. Yeah, great job. So I'm going to select this bird right here. There we go. Now I'll find my move tool, bring him over to my trees PSD and drop him in. He's too big, right? He's huge. So he's kind of stupid looking. Who wants that? Nobody. Let's do a command to control T and bring this guy down to where he belongs. What did I do? Why is he coming over as a mask? That is bizarre. What the hell? I mean... <laughs> I can see that might be useful for some things. Let's do subtract. I mean, that'll work. Um, <laughs> it's stupid, though. So there we go. Let's do again. Uh, take them down to size here. We want this subtle. I'm gonna stick him on a branch somewhere. Let's reverse him. No, not like that. Shit. You stupid bird. This bird doesn't want to behave. Let's put him right there. And again, I want them to be subtle. And we also need, of course, to apply the same kind of effects to the bird as we did everything else. So let's go ahead and make the bird into a smart object just so we can tweak things if we need to. And in filters, go to my... What the hell is going on? Uh, 
Gaussian blur. There he is. There's my little bird. Look at that. Let's take him down a little bit, though. We don't want him to be crazy out of focus. We want people to know he's a bird, or maybe question whether he's a bird or not, right? This is the bird that perches on the tree at the end of the world. Welcome to the end of the world. Right. Lovely. Linear burn. Let's apply that same linear burn. Well, we've already got subtract on there. So linear burn's probably not going to do what we want it to do, right? Where the hell is linear burn? There it is. Yeah, that's... <laughs> no. Jeez. Subtract is the way we're going here. But I could take it down a little. In the opacity. Yeah, there we go. That gives him that little bit of color, right? Because you can see that bleeding through right there. Cool. I might actually even use this. I don't know. We'll see. But hopefully I'll have some new creative projects soon that I can use for things like banners, right? It's kind of, I don't know. This is what we've got. My glass of Gran Opal is almost out. So that means it's almost time to stop. By the way, this is how I'm going to be timing these from now on. So since I'm doing these at night, I can have a nice glass of absinthe while I create. And uh, yeah, when the glass runs dry, that is when we break when it's over. So I've got a little bit left. Yeah. In Absinthium Creativa. To spin on In Vino Veritas. If anyone is familiar with that are saying. I think this is good. Let's go ahead and export this fella. We got a share right here. What does this do? Save as a cloud document. That's not what I want. <laughs> no, Adobe. I don't want to do that. Like, ever. So, sorry. Um, you used to be able to just share directly to Behance from Photoshop, but they've actually removed that feature, which is really sad, but I can export as a PNG file just fine. Just put my downloads right here. And then I can put this up on my Behance page later on. So yeah, there we go. That's a pretty cool. I don't know. I like it. I could use it. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe not. I don't know. So if anybody is around and interested, let's talk about some things. This is my Behance profile. You can see there we are right now talking about my Behance profile, right? There it is. So if you go to work, I do have this little live stream schedule right here. And if you click on that, you can see what I'm sort of thinking about and planning. So 
we're gonna do some stuff around Lottie files, I think, next next week. Same time as this. A little bit of Lottie files. That of course is going to involve Adobe After Effects. So if you like After Effects, you are welcome to show up. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, if you're watching the replay, thank you for bothering. And uh, yeah, I guess I will take off and close the stream. Listen to a little slumber fault on the way out. And uh, that'll be it for the week. All right. Thanks all.